Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is how to properly pull a vacuum on a heat pump or an air conditioning system. The valves right here are all the way front seated. We're going to be pulling the valve cores out with the valve core removal tools. We're going to be using just two hoses attached directly to the vacuum pump, and I'm just going to show you how to go through this entire process. We're going to read our vacuum with our micron gauge and just so you know this hose right here is a 3 8 and it, and it goes from 3 8 to quarter inch here and we have another quarter inch hose here and it, and it maintains quarter inch inside the hose there is no valve core depressor on this one or on this one that would slow the flow up of the vacuum as well we are going to be pulling these valve cores out just to pull a more thorough vacuum we're going to pull this vacuum down below 500 microns and it's going to hold uh, below 500 microns we're going to do a test for about 10 minutes just to make sure that it's holding the micron level the reason that we're not using a manifold gauge set is just you have the more potential for leaks and stuff and I know in the past that's kind of driven me a little crazy at times trying to find the one hose that might be leaking you know you want to make sure that you have vacuum hoses that are rated for vacuuming it's built a little differently than the normal service hoses that are rated for just pressure so these are actually for vacuum and it actually says uh, vacuum certified on, on the refrigerant hose. So we're going to go ahead and pull a vacuum that's going to be below 500 microns on the micron scale. Then we're going to isolate the vacuum pump and the hoses and we're still going to keep our micron gauge attached to the line set right here. So during this vacuum we're vacuuming the suction line and the liquid line and the evaporator coil. We're pulling a vacuum from both sides. You always want to make sure to pull a vacuum from both sides so that you don't go through the restriction of the metering device all the way over at the evaporator quill, which will be the furthest distance away. On most mini split systems, the metering device is actually in the outdoor unit, so you'd only have to pull a vacuum from the one side, and most times the mini split manufacturers are only giving you a suction port, so that's okay. There is no metering device over at the the wall units so you can actually pull a vacuum from the one side and pull all the way through to the other okay so this vacuum will be done after the brazing and after the pressure test and just say part of the line set or the evaporator coil uh, may be existing so it might have oil in it so in that case you want to do an oil blowout after the pressure test if it's a whole new system you do not need to do an oil blowout you can check some of the other videos I have uh, in the playlist for nitrogen pressure testing and wheel blowouts. So you vacuum the system after you get done pressure testing the unit and after you get done doing an oil blowout procedure if there is a part of the system that's existing like the line set or the evaporator quill if it did have oil in it because the problem with it is you might have two globs of oil that will be moving around and then there will be air stuck between it and you want to make sure that you blow all that oil onto the inner lining of the tubes in the evaporator coil and in the line set so that you can actually pull a vacuum through this. So here we go, we're going to go ahead and pull the valve cores out. We're going to take the back of our valve core tool and we're going to go ahead and pull the Schrader valves out. You want to put them maybe in a little baggie or in the caps but then put them somewhere so they're not going to get knocked over so they don't go into the dirt. You want to make sure that you're taking these out when possible um, just because you, it really restricts the flow if you're trying to get a vacuum pulled through this little valve here. So we're going to make sure that we have our valve core out of the side of this valve core removal tool. Now this is just the way that I like to do it, so I'm just showing you the way that uh, I do it and I do it with three valve core removal tools. So we're gonna make sure that's snug on there and then we're gonna go ahead and attach our micron gauge to the top of that. And we're gonna attach our hose right here. You don't need to have these crazy tight, just snug and it doesn't hurt to put just a little dab of refrigerant oil on them. Make sure that you don't get any refrigerant oil near the micron gauge because that could mess up the sensor. We'll leave this Schrader valve in. There's no need to pull that out. We're going to just make sure we have that cap tight too.
You want to make sure that you can close these when needed, so just make sure that you can turn the levers. You know, obviously there's no obstructions in the way for all three of these, so we're fine. After we get done pulling the vacuum, we're going to go ahead and break the vacuum with the service valves. So we're going to allow the refrigerant from the outdoor unit to come into the line set after the vacuum is done. And this is a Bryant unit, so we're going to go ahead and open it with this service valve, which is a suction line. Different manufacturers will ask you to break the vacuum uh, with the liquid line. Some will say it with the suction line due to the oil in the compressor, but uh, that's a different story. Now we're going to go ahead and turn the vacuum pump on to make sure that all of our hoses are snug. Now we'll go ahead and turn on our micron gauge and then we'll turn on our vacuum pump. Make sure it's set for microns. It's going to take the vacuum pump just a little bit of time in order to pull deep enough vacuum for the micron gauge to be able to read it. And there it goes. It's going to pull it fast until it gets down low and then it's going to go slower so we're going to go ahead and speed it up. We have a fast forward coming up. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and shut the valve cores off. And turn the pump off. Now we're going to watch the micron level to see if it rises. What we just did is we turned off the valve cores and we isolated the hose and the vacuum pump from the line set and micron gauge. We're going to let this sit for a little bit and just watch the micron level and make sure it does not rise above 500 microns. If it rises above 500 microns, then we know that we either have moisture in the system or there's a leak. If the micron level goes all the way up to a number that it can't read, then, then that's a definite indication that you have a leak. I usually pull my vacuums down to two or 300 microns and then make sure that they don't rise up above 500. These valve core removal tools here are rated down to 20 microns. It's real important that this, that the valve that you're using is vacuum rated. That's why we're using a third valve core removal tool and not a, a hose with a valve on it. Okay, the micron gauge stopped moving and it seems to be holding steady at 270 microns. It's been about eight or nine minutes, something like that. So you want to just test a micron level for about five to ten minutes just to make sure that it's not going up. We're going to go ahead and isolate our micron gauge. And then we're going to go ahead and open up our service valve. Now you can take this off or you can uh, just leave it attached. I'm just going to leave it attached just so you can see that the micron level is not going up and that this um, valve right here is holding. You want to make sure that you have a wrench. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. Just I don't want any pressure just by chance to get up into the micron gauge. And now I'm going to keep going. I like to do a lot of times just open this one up a little bit then open this one up just to get both sides done and then I come back and open them up all the way typically. Make sure that you don't continue to come past the top of this. You don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on it. It's not like a back seating valve uh, where you don't have valve cores. It's just all the way back and you don't have to have a whole lot of pressure on it.
You want to make sure that you have a wrench on these just because sometimes you really have to push hard and you don't want to break any uh, braze joints on this. Just so you know, I always use a straight service wrench. I don't find much need for a uh, angled one. In fact, I can't get as much torque on as I want to with that. But everybody has their own preference on it. Okay, now that we have the service valves all the way up, the refrigerant has now made it into the line set and the evaporator quill, we're going to now go ahead and replace the Schrader valves. So what you do is you make sure that you have this nut up all the way to the front, then you go ahead and put it in, and you can go ahead and open that up, and that's going to allow the pressure to come through. I'm going to purge any air out in the, in the very back of this, okay, then we're going to go ahead and put pressure this way while turning clockwise in order to screw the valve core back in. Okay. Same thing with this side, you're going to push this all the way up to the front. We'll purge the air out right here. This air is really probably not going to get in there because we're pressing past it with the valve core, but we do it anyway. Make sure that this handle is straight so that you don't get caught on it on the way in. Now you can go ahead and attach your manifold gauge set, turn the unit on, and check the refrigerant charge. Just so you know, I attach tool links in the description below of everything that I used here. The vacuum hoses, the vacuum pump, the valve core removal tools, the micron gauge, the service wrench, all of those things. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.